sitting here live on LinkedIn and YouTube, and I'm looking at my clock for try being on the 10 spot. It says 9.59. <laughs> what do you know about that, people? Captain on time today. Very exciting stuff. Just rolled 10. So let's go. Let's talk about triggers. And, you know, it's funny. I made a teaser for this video coming up a couple hours ago, and I said I'd have to make a Lone Ranger joke. And I'm old enough to know who the Lone Ranger was, but not necessarily old enough to have watched a lot of Lone Rangers. And so as I was thinking about it, it dawned on me about 10 minutes ago that the Lone Ranger's horse was named Silver, not Trigger. That was Roy Rogers' horse. And I am definitely not old enough to know a damn thing about that. So I guess I don't even have to make a Lone Ranger joke now because it's completely inapplicable. It doesn't make any sense. That's frustrating. Oh, well, you know, you try and be funny once in a while, and that's the issue when you try. Got to just be funny. It's got to be organic. The trying for the birds. Anyway, triggers, not horses, is what we're going to discuss today. And... We live in a relatively annoying world because everybody is wearing their triggers on their sleeve. And let's be honest, it's cool that you have triggers. You're going to have things that trigger you. We all do. But, 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 but your triggers are yours. They're not anybody else's. And they certainly shouldn't become anybody else's issue. We shouldn't have to be tiptoeing around, walking on eggshells, whatever euphemism you want to use, just because you're triggered about a thing that probably trails years back in your life. And now everybody's got to be like, oh, I got to be super uptight or super careful about what I say. Um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't use kind words. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be mindful and thoughtful about how we communicate. I am saying that some of us are triggered by the weirdest stuff that is really nobody's business but yours. And so how do we get better at this? Well, I'm going to show you this slide because I like it and I think it's effective and I think it really does a good job of nailing what the issue is. Chrome tab, not what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for right here. And so let me let me blow this up for you so you can see the two main points that are here. Number one is on the left. People can't push your buttons if you don't let them. What does that mean? Well, that means, as stated clearly, your triggers are yours. And so, yeah, you can have things that bug you or set you off or that you're uncomfortable with, but that doesn't mean that somebody talking about it, sharing about it, bringing it up, posting about it can bother you if you say, Poof, you know what, this is my issue, not yours. I'm going to deal with it. And the beautiful thing about that thought process is you don't even have to say it out loud, right? You can internalize that. You can say, I know this is an area that bugs me and I need to work on it. I had a situation the other day where I was triggered. Um, I'm doing some consulting work with a client of mine, a friend of mine, Bruce Covington over at BJ Cass Advisors. And Bruce said, hey, I'm going to get you business cards. Now, to be fair, I haven't, I, I had business cards with the insurance company when I was there, but I haven't purchased business cards for my company in years because I don't hand them out. I'm like, you want to find me? Look for me. I'm easy to find. If you can't find me, you didn't look hard enough. Stay away from the Terry Bean in Oregon. That's a whole different conversation. But if you want to Google it, don't say I didn't warn you. So when he was asking about the business cards, he said, what do you want your title to be? And before I could answer, he said, account executive. And dude, that triggered me, man. And I was like, 
what the heck is this dude talking about, account executive? I'm not an account executive. I haven't been an account executive since 2002. And even then, I was a senior account executive. Yeah, senior account executive. That's right. Um, and and I know, I know, I know he didn't mean anything about it by it. I know he wasn't thinking about it. I know it didn't have any impact on him. But I sat with that crap for like two hours that day, really trying to figure out what was it that bothered me so much about you know, some fictitious couple of words on a business card. Why does it even matter? But it did. And it did. And so, you know, I I thought through it for a while. Like I said, a couple of hours, I literally wrote account executive in big letters on my, in my journal and stared at it. <laughs> I'm a dork. I didn't do this two hours straight, by the way. I had other things that I had to do, but I let it ruminate in the back of my mind as I was working on some other things. And I came to the conclusion that it was really tied to a conversation my now wife, then girlfriend, and I had 20 some years ago. And it just kind of set me off. Like I could trace all the way back to the genesis of why it's an issue. So I did not like go off on Bruce, right? Because that's not fair. Bruce had no idea what he did. And I suggested a different title. And he and I moved on until the next day when I went and told him this same story. And it was interesting. He's like, dude, you're weird. And I'm like, yes, yes, I am. I am aware of this. And I said, but you probably, you could probably feel like something coming from me. And it was just a text conversation. Imagine what would happen if it would have been on the phone. And so I wanted to explain it because again, you know, he didn't mean any malice or anything by it. He just suggested a couple of words that he's familiar with in his parlance. And that made sense to me. And so I want you to realize most times people aren't intentionally trying to trigger you, right? They don't even know what your triggers are. So they're not sitting there going, man, you know what? I'm going to push this dude's buttons to death. That's not how it works. That's not a thing. Most people aren't malicious. Some are. Some are. But most people aren't. And the best way to make sure that people can't push your buttons is the second point on this slide. And that's not letting people know what your buttons are, right? There are people, like I said, who are malicious. If they find out what your buttons are, it is pushing season. Like they're going to call their friends and be like, yo, bug being with this. It drives him nuts. And, And that's how you know you have really good friends when they know what your buttons are and they intentionally push them for their amusement. And also to desensitize you to what those issues are. If you think about it, you start hearing the same crap enough, eventually it's going to stop bugging you because you're going to have to let it stop bugging you. You're going to have to make it stop bugging you, right? Think about it. Because if it's the same thing over and over and over again, that is the literal definition of insanity, according to Albert Einstein, doing the same thing over again, expecting different results. So it kind of wears you down to the point where you're like, man, these are just words. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'm going to come back and look at, uh, well, basically my laptop. Um, But pretend I'm going to look at your faces. Whoa, hey, look at that. You guys got uh, a little preview of the next slide. Isn't that super fun? I don't know where my screen sharing thing went, but I guess it didn't. Um, So I had a professor when I was in Eastern Michigan University, Dr. Gary Evans. Dr. Evans taught the giant lecture for public speaking. And he used to use the phrase, words don't mean, people mean. And I always love that because, you know, we get so bent out of shape over the words that we hear that people use. 
And, you know, what we really need to be looking at is the intention, the intentionality behind those words, because the words themselves are words, right? But what the meaning they put behind them is what really matters and what we should probably concern ourselves with. So you can really do a deep dive fairly quickly and assess, is this person trying to push my buttons or are they just ignorant of what my buttons are? And to be fair, they should be ignorant to what your buttons are. They shouldn't know what they are, right? Because they're yours. And so I like this idea of words don't mean people mean when we're trying to assess how we're going to respond to someone. Are we looking at the words and being triggered by them and reacting to that? Because that is so low level, right? That is some surface stuff. There is no depth there. There's no effort. There's no time. There's no accountability. That's just easy to just snap a reaction off. What I prefer people do is respond. And to me, if you're going to respond to a situation, it takes some sort of cognitive processing or some sort of heartfelt or gut check processing where you run what happened through your mind, through your heart, through your gut, filter it, figure out what the intention was behind it, and then make an intelligent response from there. And I think, and I feel, and I pretty much know that if more people took the time to run those things through those processes, we would have a lot less miscommunication and misunderstanding because we would realize that, yeah, I was triggered, but they did not try and trigger me. And so that's the thought process. That's the message for today. Your triggers are yours. Figure out how to keep them yours. Figure out how to um, process, was it an intentional triggering or was it just accidental? And then really, this is the important piece. Take the time to sit with it. Understand why is this triggering me in the first place? What is the cause? I told you that account executive story. And, and again, I track that thing back to a single conversation, one discussion. It was a throwaway line my girl used to piss me off. All BS aside, that's the story that took place 22 years ago. And it sits there and it stews and it stirs in the back of your mind, right? And you're not even aware of it. So this is what we need to do. I hope it works for you. I hope it's helpful. That book that I have, I failed to mention this every single time, but did you know, and of course you didn't, but did you know, and of course you didn't, that a percentage of every single sale that book goes to my lovely daughter? Yeah, we're partners in the book. So I've got my writing partner, Alex Borzo. And then my lovely daughter, Alex Bean, just coincidental, uh, that I'm splitting all the dollars with. So, you know, Alex Borzo is very cool. She's literally moving from Lima, Peru into somewhere in Spain. It's not mine to tell you where she's moving to. Uh, and my lovely daughter's a college student, man. So pick up a copy of the book. Go get it. You're going to love it. It's awesome. And... It's conveniently located right here. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. I really do. I love the cover. So if you strictly judge a book by the cover, it's amazing. And if you judge a book by the content, it's really, really good. So what do you got to lose? Findingharmonybook.com. Get you some. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. I'll see you in a week if I don't see you first. And uh, I'll look forward to our next interaction. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. Be well.